So in this video we will go over steps for creating a R notebook file which contains all the codes and also all the outputs that you have. So we will go over steps of creating a deep neural network model. We will also see how to address class imbalance where samples from one category are much higher than other categories. And for this uh, we are going to use a CTG data set where target variable is NSP, normal suspect and pathologic. So file, new file and then you see R notebook. So it opens up a template and in fact we can get rid of everything that we have and start with a clean slate. So this R notebook is created in different chunks. To insert a chunk, if you are using a Mac you can use command option and I. So I am going to use library Keras. Next I will read data file into data. We can also look at structure of the data using str. I am not running any one of these uh, lines yet. So once uh, we complete the chunk, we can run the entire chunk at once. Our target variable is NSP in this data set and currently it has values 1, 2 and 3. So I am going to convert that to 0, 1 and 2 and that I can do using data dollar sign NSP data dollar sign NSP minus 1. We can also create a table of data dollar sign NSP and we can also visualize this using bar plot. In fact we can go for a proportion table where we can insert this information table data dollar sign NSP. We can run entire chunk using this green button here. Or if you are using Mac, you can use command shift enter. So that will immediately run all the codes in the chunk. So you can look at uh, the first output that was because of str 2126 observations and 22 variables. And the last variable is our target variable NSP. And the other output that you see is because of this line here, table. So we see that there are 1655 observations where the value of NSP is 0 which means patient is normal and there are 295 cases where patient is suspect and 176 cases with patient pathological. And we also get uh, this graphical output which highlights the class imbalance. So this plot highlights that there are more cases where a patient is normal and the least one is where patient is pathological. So now let's insert a new chunk. So the first thing I'm going to do is convert this data into matrix using as dot matrix. Remove all the default names of the dimensions. And let's also normalize the data. So all rows, so I'm going to leave that empty and after that comma and for columns we'll go with first 21 columns because 22nd column is target. So we just want to normalize independent variables which are first 21 variables. And next thing we do is we partition the data and for that I am going to use set.seed. Let's use 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is for repeatability. You can get exactly same partitioning of the data into training and test. So we are going to take independent samples of size 2 and we supply number of row for the data and this is sampling with replacement. So we'll say replace equals capital T for true. Probability, let's use 70% for training data and remaining 30% for testing data. So within training, let's store that part of data where i and d is 1 for the row and we want to use first 21 columns. Let's create training target where we are going to store the 22nd variable. 
similarly test target and then we say train labels to categorical so this is part of keras package so using this we can convert our labels into a binary class matrix for this one we'll use training target and similarly test labels and just to see first 10 rows of data we can say 1 to 10 comma so now we can run this chunk where we have prepared our data for creating a deep learning model. So let me run this using command shift enter. This output is based on this 33rd line. For each row, only one of the values is one. So for example, in the first column, whenever it is one, it means that the patient is normal. And whenever second column is one, that means the patient is suspect. And when third column is one, that means the patient is pathological. So let's insert a chunk. So we are going to use this Keras underscore model underscore sequential. So I want to connect this uh, model to a pipe operator percentage greater than percentage. And for that, I'm going to use a shortcut on Mac. That shortcut is shift command and M. And then let's use a dense layer using layer underscore dense. So this is a fully connected layer in a neural network. And for the first uh, hidden layers, I'm going to specify units as eight. So eight neurons or eight nodes in that uh, neural network for the first hidden layer. For activation function, I'm going to use the most popular that we use in these kind of situations. R E L U for input shape I'm going to say 21 because we have 21 independent variables and then again connect this to the next line of code using the pipe operator so we'll use layer underscore dense and the number of units are going to be three because we have three classes for the target variable for this output layer we are going to use most suitable activation function which is soft max and then we can also do summary of this model so i'm going to run this now so immediately below the chunk you have the summary of the model so first dense layer it has eight neurons and eight times 21 neurons in the input layer plus eight bias terms will give us 176 similarly eight times three gives us 24 and then we add 3 for the bias term to get 27. So this uh, neural network model has 203 total parameters. Let's add a new chunk. And for the loss function, so our target variable NSP has like three levels. And the most suited loss function is categorical underscore cross entropy. For optimizer in these situations, we use Adam and for metrics, we use accuracy. So now we can run this chunk. And let's store output in a history and then use the pipe operator to connect this to the next line where we can use fit and we are going to fit this model using training data and the labels are in train labels. Let's use 100 epochs. And just to make sure that we don't overfit, we'll use validation split 0.2. So 80% of the data within the training part will be used for training. And so 20% of the data will be reserved for validation purposes. Also use plot function and do plot of the history. So let's run this. So we get a running plot of the outcome on the right side. The top one is for loss and the bottom one is for accuracy. And the green line is for validation errors or validation losses. And the blue one is for training losses. And because of this uh, plot line here, we also get this uh, output.
and use a function called evaluate. So evaluation is based on test data and we also provide test labels. We can also create confusion matrix with the help of uh, predictions. So I'm going to store predictions in PRED and we'll predict classes using predict underscore classes based on test data. And then we are going to use this PRED to create a confusion matrix. So predicted will be PRED and actual will be test target that we had created earlier. So let's uh, run this chunk. So it gives us a loss of 0.43 and accuracy of about 82%. 440 correct predictions for zero or normal patient. 42 correct predictions for suspect and 13 correct predictions for pathological patient. I'm going to copy and paste previous commands to save time. We can also copy the compile part. And finally, we also copy fitting model part of the codes. So I'm going to make some change to the architecture by developing a slightly deeper network. So let's go for 40 here. Input and output is not going to change. I'm also going to add a layer underscore dropout with the rate of 0.4. So 40% uh, of the units will be dropped and that will help in uh, avoiding overfitting. I'm going to connect this to next line where I'm going to insert another uh, dense layer. So this is the second hidden layer. Let's use 30 units here. And activation function is still going to be R-E-L-U. And we'll connect this to the next line. So because we have less units, let's reduce this to 30%. And let's copy these two lines to have a third hidden layer with the 20 neurons and I'm also going to reduce this to about 20%. In the fitting of the model, I'm going to add one more line which will be class underscore weight. So let's do some simple calculations. 1655 divided by 295. So that is uh, 5.6. So number of data points in category 0 or normal patient category is 5.6 times more than category number 1 where patients are suspect. Similarly, 1655 divided by 176, that is 9.4. Compared to this category, number of samples in this category is 9.4 times more. So these are the numbers we are going to use for class weights. So we can do this by using list. And within quotes, we can say 0 equals 1. So that's the baseline. And then within quotes, whenever it is 1, we want to give 5.6 times more weightage compared to the baseline. Whenever it is 2, we want to give 9.4 times more weightage. So this line basically can take care of class imbalance. And then we can also plot history. So in this part, we have uh, modified our architecture we left uh, compile part as it is and we made a small change by incorporating class imbalance with the help of class weights so now we can run this chunk so as the number of epochs uh, increase initially loss values decrease and accuracy values increase and then they more or less stabilize. One last uh, chunk for the evaluation. So I'm going to copy what we had earlier and then run this chunk. For normal patient category, we had 440 correct predictions. But with this new model that has come down, in fact, for class 0, we have 70 correct predictions for suspect category. We had only 42. So there's a big improvement for suspect category. For pathological, we 
only had 13 correct predictions now we have 44 so this combination of uh, making the network deeper and also giving uh, class weights to handle class imbalance problem clearly helps to improve things for suspect and pathological categories the initial model was giving more weightage to class 0 because most of the samples came from this group but when we gave uh, more weightage to class 1 and 2 we saw big improvements for those two categories and the cost of losses for class 0. And I'm going to save this file on my desktop. I have created a new directory called deep. So this is an empty directory. So let's call our file deep. So I'm going to save this. And then when you go on your desktop, and open this directory called deep what it does is it has created two files deep.rmd r markdown file so not only that it also creates uh, another file automatically which is a html file and if you open this file so this is basically your r notebook it opens up in a browser and it has all the quotes and all the outputs that we have seen earlier and it also gives you some options so for example at any place you want to hide your code you can simply hide by clicking on hide when you click on code the code appears you can also click on code at the top and it gives you a lot of options either you can do show all code or hide all code and it also allows you to download this as a rmd file